Hello, and welcome back to Candlelit, the nightly show where I read you literature. Right now, we're reading Beowulf. I've never read this book, and I have no idea how to pronounce any of the old English names. Here we go. The hero comes to Heorot. So, that troubled time continued. Woe that never stopped. Steady affliction for half Dana's son. Too hard an ordeal. There was panic after dark. People endured raids in the night were riven by the terror. When he heard about Grendel, Helax Thane was on home ground over in Geatland. There was no one else like him alive. In this day, he was the mightiest man on earth, high-born and powerful. He ordered a boat that would ply the waves. He announced his plan to sail the swan's road and seek out that king, the famous prince who needed defenders. Nobody tried to keep him from going. No elder denied him, dear as he was to them. Instead, they inspected omens and spurred his ambition to go, whilst he moved about like the leader he was, enlisting men the best he could find. With fourteen others, the warrior boarded the boat as captain, a canny pilot along coast and currents. Time went by. The boat was on water, in close under the cliffs. Men climbed eagerly up the gangplank, Sand churned in surf. Warriors loaded a cargo of weapons, shining war gear in the vessel's hold, then heaved out away with a will in their wood-wreathed ship. Over the waves, with the wind behind her and foam at her neck, she flew like a bird until her curved prow had covered the distance. And on the following day, at the due hour, those seafarers sighted land, sunlit cliffs, sheer crags, and looming headlands, the landfall they sought. It was the end of their voyage, and the Geats vaulted over the side, out onto the sand, and moored their ship. There was a clash of mail and a thresh of gear, they thanked God for that easy crossing on a calm sea. When the watchman on the wall, the shielding's lookout, whose job it was to guard the sea cliffs, saw shields glittering on the gangplank and battle equipment being unloaded, he had to find out who and what the arrivals were. So he rode to the shore. This horseman of Hrothgar's, and challenge them in formal terms, flourishing his spear. What kind of men are you who arrive rigged out for combat in your coats of mail, sailing here over the sea lanes in your steep-hulled boat? I have been stationed as lookout on this coast for a long time. My job is to watch the waves for raiders. Any danger to the Danish shore? Never before has a force under arms disembarked so openly. Not bothering to ask if the sentries allowed them safe passage or the clan had consented. Nor have I seen a mightier man at arms on this earth than the one standing here. Unless I am mistaken, he is truly noble. This is no mere hanger-on in a hero's armor. So, now, before you 
fair inland as interlopers. I have to be informed about who you are and where you hail from. Outsiders, outsiders from across the water. I say it again. The sooner you tell where you come from and why, the better. The leader of the troop unlocked his word hoard. The distinguished one delivered this answer. We belong by birth to the Giat people and owe allegiance to Lord Hialak. In this day, my father was a famous man, a noble warrior lord named Edgetheo. He outlasted many a long winter and went on his way. All over the world, Men wise in council continue to remember him. We come in good faith to find your lord and nation's shield, the son of Halfdana. Gives us the right advance, gives us the right advice and direction. We have arrived here on a great errand to the lord of the Danas, and I believe, therefore, there should be nothing hidden or withheld between us. So, tell us if what we have heard is true about this threat, whatever it is, this danger abroad in the dark nights, this corpse maker mongering death in the Shielding's country. I come to proffer my wholehearted help and counsel. I can show the wise Hrothgar a way to defeat his enemy and find respite, if any respite is to reach him ever. I can calm the turmoil and terror in his mind. Otherwise, he must endure woes and live with grief for as long as his hall stands at the horizon on its high ground. Undaunted, sitting astride his horse, the Coast Guard answered. Anyone with gumption and a sharp mind will take the measure of two things, what's said and what's done. I believe what you have told me, that you are a troop loyal to our king. So come ahead with your arms and your gear, and I will guide you. What's more... I'll order my own comrades on their word of honor to watch your boat down there on the strand. Keep her safe in her fresh tar until the time comes for her curved prow to preen on the waves and bear this hero back to Geatland. May one so valiant and venturesome come unharmed through the clash of battle. So, they went on their way. The ship rode the water, broad-beamed, bound by its hawser, and anchored fast. Boar shapes flashed above their cheek guards, the brightly forged work of goldsmiths watching over those stern-faced men. They marched in step, hurrying on till the timbered hall rose before them, radiant with gold. Nobody on earth knew of another building like it. Majesty lodged there, its light shone over many lands. So their gallant escort guided them to that dazzling stronghold and indicated the shortest way to it. Then the noble warrior wheeled on his horse, and spoke these words. It is time for me to go. May the Almighty Father keep you, and in his kindness watch over your exploits. I am away to the sea, back on alert against enemy raiders. It was a paved track, a path 
path that kept them in marching order. Their mail shirts glinted, hard and hand-linked. The high-gloss iron of their armor rang. So they duly arrived in their grim and war grave and gear at the hall. And, weary from the sea, stacked wide shields of the toughest hardwood against the wall, then collapsed on the benches. Battle dress and weapons clashed. They collected their spears in a seafarer's stook, a strand of grayish tapering ash, and the troops themselves were as good as their weapons. Then a proud warrior questioned the men concerning their origins. Where do you come from, carrying these decorated shields and shirts of mail, these cheek-hinged helmets and javelins? I am Hrothgar's herald and officer. I have never seen so impressive or large an assembly of strangers, stoutness of heart, Bravery, not banishment, must have brought you to Hrothgar. The man whose name was known for courage, the Geat leader, resolute in his helmet, answered in return. We are retainers from Hialak's band. Beowulf is my name. If your lord and master, the most renowned son of Halfdana, will hear me out and graciously allow me to greet him in person, I am ready and willing to report my errand. Wolfgar replied, A Wendell chief, renowned as a warrior, well known for his wisdom and the temper of his mind. I will take this message in accordance with your wish to our noble king, our dear lord, friend of the Danas, the giver of rings. I will go and ask him about your coming here, then hurry back with whatever reply it pleases him to give. With that, he turned to where Hrothgar sat, an old man among retainers. The valiant follower stood foursquare in front of his king. He knew the courtesies. Wolfgar addressed his dear lord. People from Gertland have put us ashore. They have sailed far over the wide sea. They call the chief in charge of their band by the name of Beowulf. They beg, my lord, an audience with you, exchange of words and formal greeting. Most gracious Hrothgar, do not refuse them, but grant them a reply. From their arms and appointment, they appear well-born and worthy of respect, especially the one who has led them this far. He is formidable indeed. Hrothgar, protector of shieldings, replied, I used to know him when he was a young boy. His father before him was called Edgtheo. Hrethel the Geat gave Edgtheo his daughter in marriage. This man is their son, here to follow up an old friendship. A crew of sailors who sailed for me once with a gift cargo across to Geatland returned with marvelous tales about him. A thane, they declared, with the strength of thirty in the grip of each hand. Now, holy God has in his goodness, guided him here to the West Danus to defend us from Grendel. 
This is my hope. And for his heroism, I will recompense him with a rich treasure. Go immediately, bid him and the guards he has in attendance to assemble and enter. Say, moreover, when you speak to them, they are welcome to Denmark. At the door of the hall, Wolfgar duly delivered the message. My lord, the conquering king of Danus, bids me announce that he knows your ancestry, also that he welcomes you to Heorot and salutes your arrival from across the sea. You are now free to move forward to meet Hrothgar in helmets and armor, but shields must stay here and spears be stacked until the outcome of the audience is clear. The hero arose, surrounded closely by his powerful thanes. A party remained under orders to keep watch on the arms. The rest proceeded, led by their prince under Heorot's roof. And standing on the hearth, in webbed links that the smith had woven, the fine forged meth, no, the fine forged mesh of his gleaming mail shirt, resolute in his helmet, Beowulf spoke. Greetings to Hrothgar. I am Hialok's kinsman, one of his hull troop. When I was younger, I had great triumphs. Then news of Grendel, hard to ignore, reached me at home. Sailors brought stories of the plight you suffer in this legendary hall, how it lies deserted, empty, and useless once the evening light hides itself under heaven's dome. So every elder and experienced councilman among my people supported my resolve to come here to you, King Hrothgar, because all knew of my awesome strength. They had seen me boltered in the blood of enemies when I battled and bound five beasts, raided a troll nest, and in the night sea slaughtered sea brutes. I have suffered extremes and avenged the Geats. Their enemies brought it upon themselves. I devastated them. Now, I mean to be a match for Grendel, settle the outcome in a single combat. And so, my request, O King of Bright Danus, dear Prince of the Shieldings, friend of the people and their ring of defense, my one request is that you won't refuse me who have come this far, the privilege of purifying Heorot, with my own men to help me, and nobody else. I have heard, moreover, that the monster scorns in his reckless way to use weapons. Therefore, to heighten Heorot's fame and gladden his heart, I hereby renounce sword and the shelter of the broad shield. The heavy warboard, hand to hand is how it will be, a life and death fight with the fiend. Whichever one death fells, must deem it a just judgment by God. If Grendel wins, it will be a gruesome day. He will glut himself on the geats in the war hall, swoop without fear on that flower of manhood, as on others before. Then my face won't be there to be covered in death. He will carry me away as he goes to ground, gorged and bloodied. He will run gloating with my raw corpse and feed on it alone in a cruel frenzy, fouling his moor nest. No need then to lament for long or lay out my body. If the battle takes me, send back this breast webbing that Wayland fashioned and Hrethel gave me to Lord Hialak. Fate goes ever as fate must. Hrothgar, 
the helmet of shielding spoke. Beowulf, my friend, you have traveled here to favor us with help and to fight for us. There was a feud one time begun by your father. With his own hands he had killed Heatholof, who was a wolfing. So war was looming, and his people, in fear of it, forced him to leave. He came away then over rolling waves to the South Danis here, the Sons of Honor. I was then in the first flush of kingship, establishing my sway over the rich strongholds of this heroic land. Heorogar, my older brother, and the better man, also a son of Halfdanus, had died. Finally, I healed the feud by pain. I shipped a treasure trove to the Wolfings, and Edgetheo acknowledged me with oaths of allegiance. It bothers me to have to burden anyone with all the grief that Grendel has caused and the havoc he has wreaked upon us in Heorot. Our humiliations. My household guard are on the wane. Fate sweep, sweeps them away into Grendel's clutches, but God can easily halt these raids and harrowing attacks. Time and again, when the goblets passed and seasoned fighters got flushed with beer. They would pledge themselves to protect Heorot and wait for Grendel with their wetted swords. But when dawn broke and day crept in over each empty blood-spattered bench, the floor of the mead hall where they had feasted would be slick with slaughter. And so they died, faithful retainers, and my following dwindled. Now, Take your place at the table. Relish the triumph of heroes to your heart's content.